What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're checking in back again once on Star Traders Frontier. That sentence was really, really, uh, that was an odd sentence. I'm going to be honest with you. It's my first recording of the day. That was a really, really odd phrasing. Back once again. There we go. I fixed it. See? You can just, you can do like these little modifications to the intro. Uh, welcome on in. Star Traders Frontiers. We haven't checked this game out in a really, really long time. But since we checked it out last, the game has had like 250 updates. The Trees Brothers are absolutely working around the clock on this game. And it's associated nebulous. If you've never heard of the Trees Brothers before, I was introduced to them way back in like 2009, 2010 on a phone game that I bought, actually. It was like one of their first little projects that they worked on, and it was a space trading roguelike that was really, really hard. And I don't remember the name of it at this point. I honestly, I don't even recall. But I remember like any time that I was kind of like at the DMV or like waiting in line somewhere, or basically I had just downtime, I would start another roguelike run in that game. And it ended up being one of those games I dumped a lot of hours into. And since then, the Trees Brothers have continued to mash out just game after game after game and each one kind of iteratively goes up in terms of like complication and sort of like depth and the amount of things that are going on inside of it the games are pretty widely varied in their subject matter but they all tend to exist inside the same game universe uh, they tend to be everything from like strategy rpgs to what we're playing right now star traders frontiers which is actually a very very in-depth customizable space rpg uh, it's not big on looks that's really not what the trees brothers go for with most of their games uh, their games tend to not be lookers, but they tend to be players. And so anyways, Star Traders Frontiers. This is an open world sandbox space game where you can trade, you can bounty hunt, you can mine, you can explore, you can basically do whatever it is that you want to do. It's also got a narrative that is emergent as you play the game and as you rep up with various factions inside the context of the game. And it makes for a pretty, pretty cool experience so long as you don't really care about graphics. And so anyways, let's dive straight on in and start a new captain. For the sake of expediency, I'm probably not going to do most of the tutorial stuff. I'm probably not going to do most of the early narrative stuff. We may take it here and there, but we're going to be skipping over dialogue and things of that. Because, like, this game gives you a lot of dialogue at the beginning of the game. And that dialogue will more than easily eat up the 30 minutes that we're going to be using to show off the game. And so I'd rather kind of, like, dive in and sandbox it up rather than dedicate myself to, like, reading, you know, just narrative for the entire thing. But rest assured, there is a narrative here, and it is definitely a space narrative and kind of a dystopian space future with various sort of mech warrior style houses all vying for supremacy throughout the galaxy. Uh, and it is good. It's solid. It'll definitely introduce you to the players in the galaxy. Uh, so the first thing we need to do is we need to decide what our template is going to be. Uh, I usually just go with kind of like nomads. They give you kind of a rough allotment of skills that are just sort of like jack of all trades, master of none. So it makes it good. If you go with something like the Corsair, you're going to be really, really good at like space combat. Uh, if you're going to go with the tracker, you're going to be really good at like bounty hunting and chasing people down and making deals and things like that. If you go with the smuggler, you're basically going to be like a charisma character, somebody that gets by on their wits and your ability to talk your way through things. But we'll just go with the nomad to keep things nice and sort of even for right now. Let's go ahead and launch off. Uh, we also get to pick what our character looks like. I'm going to go with a dude, and then we'll pick our face over here. Any good faces to pick over on this side? Let's see. What looks what looks dope to me? I mean, that guy has face tattoos. What's not to love about that? My man right here has got a top knot and a Donegal. Top knot and Donegal when you want to be stylish in space. Is there anybody with, like, a full beard? Well, there's a man right there that knows his way around the gal. Look at that fancy mustache right there. And then he's got kind of like the Tony Stark thing going on with his beard. I'll take that. What kind of outfits do we have here? I need an outfit that really sort of denotes my position in space. I mean, it's got to be that one right there. That one's got a super awesome collar on it. The only way I could get better is if it had big-ass shoulder pads because that would mean that we're like a super important person in the galaxy. Uh, House Thalun is the... Normal people you start out with as your sort of sponsor to start the game on off. There are a bunch of people here that you can pick and choose from. They've all got kind of their own motives, and they've all got their own kind of morals. Uh, you can roughly figure out what those are just by kind of like their little tagline. But for right now, we'll keep it on the default. We're on normal difficulty at the moment. You can choose to manually assign your talents if you really, really want to. The game does have a very in-depth leveling up system that has all kinds of stats and things of that nature. We'll get into that a little bit later. We're going to skip the intro right here, and let's go. 
into the galaxy we ride. So we've started out at Jenna's Haven. The Arbiter is waiting. If we plan to take her to the Fane Court, otherwise we should move on. Okay, uh, so what we can do right here is we can actually kind of like log in and we can go down. This is a wilderness area. You can explore it. It's basically like a little card game you play to decide what happens while you're exploring the planet. There's other options down here that you can take on every single planet. Uh, you can choose to patrol. That makes you get more favor with the person that owns the planet. However, anybody that's trying to spy on it, anybody that's trying to smuggle into it, anybody that's trying to pirate around it that you may capture or kill during that course, you may lose rep with them. We've got blockade right here. This allows you to basically hunt merchants around the planet to lower your reputation with the owners of this planet, but make a whole bunch of money. We can also spy on them, which allows us to lower our reputation with people on this planet, but it will give us intel that we can sell to their enemies to make a little bit of extra cash should we desire to do so. This game is so granular and it's got so many moving things going on that it's going to be difficult for me to explain things as we go. But we've got our HP up here, we've got the hull of our ship up here, we've got our reputation with the faction that owns this planet, we've got the danger level of this planet. This right here is just kind of like a attention bar, like things that need your attention. So for example, uh, there is one empty bed on board, so we could get a new recruit if we wanted to. One person is ready to level up, and then this is kind of our fuel status, like how far we can travel from our origin point. If we land right here, we can go ahead and talk to a fixer. The fixer will give us missions and stuff like that if that's what we wanted to do. Uh, we can also pick up a crew member right here. I would definitely recommend we do that. You should also be off. Like, you're using up space on your ship with your mods and everything to have this crew space. And so, like, you should always have it at full. As of right now, we've got crew dogs. As of right now, we've got pilots, four of them. We've got five gunners. We've got a mechanic. We've got an electrical technician, four of them. We've got three navigators, two soldiers, a pistolier, a swordsman. So we're actually probably not going to be that strong in hand-to-hand -hand combat. But it looks like we're actually reasonably strong as far as ship-to-ship -ship combat goes. And so I would say let's pick up another mechanic, maybe, or a gun deck boss. Yeah, let's go with the gun deck boss, because we have a lot of gunners, so we need somebody to be sort of the sergeant and be in charge of that. In addition, we've got level ups ready to go, so we can look at our crew manifest right now. Yes, indeed, every single one of these people is a member of our crew. Every single person in this list has their own equipment, they have their own armor, they have their own skill tree. Like, this game can get really, really, really in-depth if you want it to. This is one of those games that's going to be super stimulating for people that are really good at tracking a whole lot of stuff that's going on. However, if you don't want to deal with with all that you can just go bam and auto train and like auto equip and it'll just take care of it for you based on everything that you have on board and also your layout it'll basically kind of give you a really good all-around crew that's got like all their bases covered uh, this is our character right here captain Falink. you gotta train a talent uh, so we'll go on in here so basically it's split up into job levels and talents your job levels basically give you bonuses to certain tasks just in raw numerical form like it'll make you better at mechanics it'll make you better at shooting it'll make you better at this that or the other uh, talents right here are basically modifiers to either skill checks that are going to be happening while we're flying around the galaxy or they're going to be interesting additive effects that happen whenever we trigger certain events and so anyways a good example for right now is we are level 1, so we can take Far Voyager. That'll give us plus 2 to our exploration skill, and it'll make it so we use a lot less fuel. Uh, we can go with Gut Instinct. That'll make us automatically uh, pass a failed exploration test every three weeks. Uh, so once we use this up, it's on cooldown for three weeks, but it'll save us in that one case. We've got Plentiful Rewards, so that just increases the rewards we get by exploration by 10% plus our exploration skill. And then right here, Vigilant Search, we can reroll any risk card. So when we do any type of like exploration or whatever, any type of... We do exploration, uh, we do any type of blockading or barricading, those things that I just talked about. It's going to draw five cards, and those are going to be varying. Some of them are going to be green, some of them are going to be red, and some of them are going to be neutral. Green cards are good things, uh, red cards are bad things, and then neutral cards are kind of like somewhere in between. I'm just going to take the exploration skill for right now. Uh, that'll lower our fuel usage. In addition, it gives you a readout over here that lets you know if anybody else in your crew already has the skill so that you don't end up double buying. And then it'll also let you know if other people are also using talents from this talent tree so you don't get over-specialized like in one area or to help you over-specialize in one area. Uh, right here, you've got the stats of the character, equipment, all that kind of stuff. Basically, lots of things you can do to every single character in the game. But for right now, let's go ahead. We've already landed here. Uh, we'll buy some fuel real fast, which is 
made out of water. We can take a look at the cargo. It looks like they've got methane fuel and it's being sold at a B-plus price based on our trading knowledge. I will buy 65 units of it and we'll try to take it elsewhere. This fixer right here could give us a job if we wanted to. If we have good rep with this guy, we can also get other benefits from him like discounted fuel. Uh, we can get a new person from this person. We can sell things on the black market in case we're carrying drugs and things of that nature. Uh, we can climb the Thulin military hierarchy by spending money over here and using our rep. Uh, you're going to need military rank in order to buy new ships. What kind of missions do they have? It looks like they've got return shipping. This mission right here is that they want us to pick up a transport case from a House Thulun system in Warren's Landing and then we return it to here. I'll accept that mission. It seems like it's got a good paycheck. So we are now bound to this mission. Your Star Trader's character is quite new. You are an unproven captain, so for now I will only give you the simplest of missions. Basically, this guy assumes that we're an idiot. Uh, let's jump back on out of here. We're going to take a look at our mission log. We've got this return shipping. It's going to pay $10,000. We can do a waypoint real fast. And if we go back... We can take a look, and it looks like we need to go over to here, grab a thing, bring it back. We press the space bar to initiate this plan. At any time, you can do a custom waypoint by right-clicking anywhere on the map that you might want to go. But for right now, we're cruising. You may notice that events are happening down here. So, for example, we'll stop. Uh, we'll talk about this system. So this is sort of like emergent storyline. And it doesn't, like, pay a whole lot of attention to it because, honestly, it's not that bad unless you're already in trouble. But, for example, our crew discipline was questioned, but we successfully passed a check right there command success uh, ice was cleared from the engine field vents so that was hot wiring from our electrical technician unexplained compartmental damage that we don't know how it happened but apparently we failed an intimidate check internally which means that we took 21 component damage and then it looks like our crew took a little bit of morale hit right there as well and so these things are going to be happening as you're just flying around you don't really need to pay attention to them unless you're critically low on like hull or like morale or anything else but you do want to pay attention to the ones that you're failing so that you can purchase talents from the applicable characters to sort of like auto pass those or at least give you a chance at auto passing multiple times and getting kind of a rotation I found that if you have two or three people that have talents that auto pass you'll basically never reach the end of your cooldowns and you'll basically start auto passing all the stuff of that type that comes up uh, we've got to go to Hogman Fife all right so we'll click on our mission here and let's see here. We should schedule a... Okay, so we can do this in multiple ways. House Thulun dignitaries are waiting for us on Warren's Landing with the transport case. We are in a world friendly to fixer Blight Juice Tundanaw and picking up legal cargo. So we can either do this inside of a smoky spice den or we can go to the palace to do it. Let's go to the palace to do it. While it took three days, we were able to gain the required permit to visit the palace. The meeting was quick and relatively quiet but still visible at a high hall. We gained an additional three rep for the fuss even if it took us us a little bit longer nice okay so we've got to take this back to where we came from uh, we'll go ahead and ditch on out here we'll refuel while we're in the area our morale still looks okay we'll repair the little tiny bit of damage that we took right there we'll also check and see if we can sell this methane fuel anywhere but it looks like it's got an F grade price right there for selling which is really not what we're going for we bought at like a really really good price but if we sell right here we should let's see here we'll get 845 bucks so we'll lose money looking at this. We'll lose 130 credits. Eh, don't really want to do that. And so we will just continue onwards with our quest. We'll waypoint it, and then we will take it back. Okay, so a couple things went wrong while we were flying back. Uh, our bulkhead failed, which is really, really bad. Uh, it, you know, unless all that damage hit one person, though, I think we're okay. Uh, there was also a fist fight during a shift change, so that's not so great. And then we've got ionized particles that battered our ship. We... yeah, it's not that much damage. We're okay. Uh, let's go ahead and we are going to land right here, and then we're going to turn in this quest. So we'll turn it in at the spice table, and there it is. Our meeting was brisk, but we made 10,000 credits. We got a little bit of rep with House Thulun, and we got some rep with this fixer right here. So that's really, really great. Uh, we can talk to this guy. I mean, there is an emergent storyline that we could play around with, but, like, honestly, I just enjoy tooling around and sandboxing in this game, so, like, I don't really worry about it too much. Let's see if he's got another job for us. I think we can actually effectively... Actually, yeah, let's promote real fast. We'll become a recruit of House Thulun. There you go. So we lost a little bit of rep, but we have so much rep right now that, like, we can probably play around with other options. We've got a little bit of cash coming through. 
Uh, this guy hates the Templars. He's dishonest. Like I said, dude, there's so many things in this game just to pay attention with. Uh, but we've got a decent amount of influence with him. But that's what I like about it. Like, this game can kind of be as in-depth as you want it to be. Uh, so we've got requesting a new mission over here. A commodity delivery. So they want us to procure 55 units of hydrogen fuel. Oh, we've already got that. And then it's going to be 11,000 credits if we just deliver what we already have in our hold. That actually seems to be a pretty easy mission for us, all things considered. So I'm just going to get after it. We've got one person that's ready to be promoted. I definitely recommend we take care of that real fast. They are going to be leveling up as we're flying around space, just getting XP from, like, little events. Uh, our gun deck crew boss is ready to go. Okay, let's train his talents. So this guy over here, in his level 1 talents, he's got uncompromising teardown, which means that looting a captured vessel repairs our systems and our ship for a little bit, so that's good. He's got strict orders, so while we're salvaging orbitally, we can reroll one of the risk cards, so that's not too bad. He's got snarling judgment, which I think is what we're going to take. This is a crew boss skill that makes us auto-pass when we have an intimidation check, and we've been failing every single intimidation check thus far, so I'm going to go ahead and give him that skill to kind of like smooth over a weak spot in our overall operational logistical health. We'll get a little bit of fuel right there, we'll heal people from the fist fight, we'll pay every Everybody's wages, which was definitely expensive. We've already got the hydrogen fuel. No, we've got methane fuel on board. Oh, no. Okay. All right, so we've got to find some hydrogen fuel then. Well, it says this place is on a tradeway, so I think we should head over to there and see what kind of trouble we can get up to. Let's fly over to this site and see if we can sell the thing. I don't know how long we have. We have 32 weeks on that quest. We may fail it, but this is a tradeway over here, so we'll unload what we have inside of our hold no matter what, even if we take a loss in order to get this thing moving. No, we failed a doctor test. Feels bad. All right, so we'll land over here. Let's take a look. We'll repair the ship. We took a little bit of damage, unfortunately. Our crew also took a little bit of damage, so that's a bummer. We'll refuel. Ah, we've got a C-plus price over here, so we'll make 650 credits. Good. Sell it all. It's not that much, but hey, it's something. Uh, let's take a look. They've got crop harvesters. It looks like they've got raw spice, but we need a permit to trade in it. They've got trichromium going out right now. Gas processors, basic medicines. Nothing's really trading at, like, an amazing price. So I sort of think we should avoid this exchange for right now. Uh, this place, I, I tend to only buy things that are in an A rate. Oh, nice, dude. We got level ups, too. I don't know if we got it from our trading. Uh, we've got, what is your name? Kitty Sneeze a lot? Oh, never mind. Kitty Sneziot. I thought it was Kitty Sneeze a lot, dude. I was like, that's kind of a cute name. I'm not going to lie. Uh, she is our quartermaster right now. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give her another quartermaster level. I prefer to hyper specialize people instead of like playing around and having them multi class. Uh, who else did we have inside of here? One thing that I would recommend with the UI is because the game is so complicated and it's got so many things going on. One thing I would recommend is that you make this flash. So you see how it's green when they want to level up? Make it kind of fade in and fade out with the green right there so it catches the eye a little bit faster. I don't know if that's possible with the engine that they're currently using, but it would help out in order to make things a little bit more visible and things that need your attention like right now. Uh, this is our engineer. I definitely recommend we should probably have some experienced engineers on board. That sounds like a, a good plan. Let's go ahead and dip on out of this place. We still need to find this hydrogen fuel, which is going to be around somewhere. It looks like it took us... How long did it take us to get over here? I've clicked the wrong thing again. It took us two weeks to get over here, so I think we still have enough time to play around. We'll go over to this port right here. Oh, we failed another doctor's test. No, somebody got a parasitic space worm? Weak, dude. Definitely, you got to be careful about what you eat out here in these space truck stops, man. All right, basic medicines, pesticides, luxury clothing. We do have a good price on clothing. I think we could get away with that for right now. All right, so populated zones apparently are where they want us to sell these. I'm fine with that. Uh, let's go down to, that's an orbital station. What do we have over here? This is a high-tech industrial station. High-tech industrial. Okay. This is a populated sector right here, and that's where we can sell clothing at. So let's hit that, and then we'll go up to this industrial station. We'll see if we can get the hydrogen fuel, and then we'll swing it on back for the quest. I I'd really prefer not to fail this, but, like, you know, kind of is what it is. We are where we are right now. Let's go ahead and land, and let's see here. There are many ways to reduce the chance that a Oh, did somebody desert? Yeah, somebody deserted. Okay, so our morale is pretty bad right now. A little bit unfortunate, but... 
it's okay. I can fix this. You just gotta, as with all things, the secret to making your crew happier is just to buy them an ass ton of drugs. That's basically the secret. We just get them super, super high. And then we'd be like, cool, you're super, super high now. Uh, what did we lose? So we've got our gun deck boss. Did we lose a pilot? I wish it kind of told us what we lost. It probably does somewhere. But in the event log... It says we need a pilot. Okay. It says we're low on pilots right now, so I'm going to assume we lost a pilot. Let's go ahead and grab another pilot real fast. There are many, many level ups for us to take care of. Most assuredly, our main character. Uh, I'm just going to level up his explorer skill for right now. We'll take explorer up to five, and then I'll probably specialize him like in pistols or rifles or something. Sounds like a good plan. Uh, you, what are you? You're a doctor? Okay, now you're a level two doctor. I hope you do better at the space worms. I like those hoop earrings, though. Those are pretty cool. And they're pretty good looking. We can also tag people with varying colors of these little stars right here so that you can sort this menu by the star color. Uh, where's our other person at? What are you? Ah. Apparently we've got piloting skill. Lands sufficiently on the world and reduces our operations time. We can buff the ship with range. So these are combat abilities right here. I'd actually, A, automatically pass. Well, three other crew members already know it. We'll do it, though. I mean, who who knows? I mean, if you get, like, drilled with a lot of them, maybe everybody will not be on cooldown. Hey, we got a really good price over here. We made almost 3,000 credits. Very nice. It ain't much, but it's honest work. Just moving stuff around the galaxy. All right, so they got methane fuel and scrap, but their prices suck, so I think we're going to have to leave this place empty-handed. Uh, we've got a high-tech industrial world right here. Maybe we can get the fuel from over here. I think that's a really, really good plan. And if not, there's one right next to it, too. Go ahead and land down in here. Morale is good. Everybody's looking healthy. Uh, do you have the hydrogen fuel? And you do. You have it at a really good price, too. We only need 55 of it. So I'm going to take that. That has fulfilled our quest right there. And then what we need to do is we need to drop this off back at... There we go. Perfect. Space bar to autopilot back on over there. Toot toot. Off we go. With goods to throw. I'm a pilot. I do like it. I've leveled it a lot and I do not want to... Oh no, our life support failed. Weak, man. Oof, and there's a dangerous ice build up too. I don't like that. But we maintain crew discipline, so that's fine. Let's get back on in here. We'll deliver this. There's our promised delivery. We've made a little bit of rep. We've made a little bit of money. And we're starting to kind of move on up in the world of the game. Uh, we could promote our rank up again to get higher up the military hierarchy. But for now, apparently we get discounted fuel just for being here. So that's pretty cool. I had no idea that that was a thing. Uh, recruitment rumors. What are people trying to do right now? Ooh, that's expensive, dude. That's really, really expensive. That's like all my monies. Okay, I think we're at the cruise for a little bit. Apparently, we can also get individual equipment that will cost two personal rep with our contact. Okay. Yeah, what kind of stuff can I get? We've got jack braces. Oh, yeah, dude. We can get like an exoskeleton right there. Nice. We can also get Melios's skin. Okay. A 0x headset. Well, I spent it to be there, but, like, honestly, there's nothing that I really want. Oh, we need another crew? What happened to our crew? What are we missing? I think we lost a mechanic, is what it looks like to me. I think we had two mechanics before. It'd be nice if they updated this menu right here, where if you enter into a port and somebody deserts, it would have like a little minus one or like a minus two in red next to it, just to let you know for that one stop, like what you lost, so you can automatically refill it. Either that, or what they could do is in this menu right here, I'm sorry, not this menu right here, but in the recruitment menu, they could have a little button added on. It might make this a little bit busier, but, like, just replace lost crew, where it just auto-buys whatever it was that you lost. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll, we'll grab another mechanic over here. Apparently, the mechanic has a level up, too, so we gotta do something with that. Alright, uh, I want you to... Yeah, just failed repair test. There you go. I want you to make sure we stop having icy bulkheads that explode. 
I don't like it when parts of my ship are eruptive. Ew, dude, we can move poo around? Who buys poo? Probably farming worlds and refinery zones. I mean, it's not a high margin item. I don't think that we need it. Let's take another mission. All right, so he's got a one-way shipping job. Carry a data cube to Civitas Latens. All right. Can I get another mission? A jumper. All right. So the venerable archivist Rizemherm needs transport from Demasharen to Jenna's Haven. Okay. Uh, we're going to have to make a jump on that one. That's fine. All right. So missions. First things first. We'll do the one-way shipper mission. We haven't had any combat yet. I was hoping I could show you guys combat. Maybe I should go to a hostile system. Like, because the combat is actually kind of like... It's like a turn-based JRPG-style combat with the ships. You line up, you have range, you fire your weapons at each other. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Uh, let's go ahead and land over here. We'll drop off one-way shipper. There we go. We made our little bit of cash. Heal our crew members. Oh, no. They don't have enough spice for the rest of our crew. Feels bad. All right, well, we're going to have to figure that out, and hopefully people don't leave. We've paid their wage. We need three crew? Everybody's deserting me. Everybody's leaving me, man. Nobody loves me no more. All right, well, I think we lost a couple gunners. And then I think we lost a crew dog from what I'm seeing here. Okay, I got all the new crew members leveled up, so they are all where they need to be. Unfortunately, we're out of spice here. You guys got anything good? No, you guys don't have anything? Okay, well, we did our one-way delivery. So now what we need to do is we need to waypoint this guy, go find him, and bring him back. Uh, he is actually right here, so it was all in the same direction. Nice. I love it when jobs all kind of work in the in the same direction. We'll see if we can get some We'll get some time in at the spice, the spice table over here. Oh, they don't have a spice hall. Wink, dude. Uh, you guys got anything good that I can kind of, like, travel around with? You got methane fuel at, like, crazy prices. You got hydrogen fuel at a pretty good price, too. I'm going to give it a go. Let's pick this guy up. Yeah, we can take the time to do this properly and get the extra rep. All right, so we picked him up at a diplomatic location. So we were seen mingling and rubbing elbows with all the right people. Uh, if you wanted to look at the ship customization, just this basic ship that we started out with, uh, it's got all these different mods. These can all be moved around. They can all be replaced. They can all be fiddled with. They can all be customized. Uh, it gives you a synopsis right here, sort of Darkest Dungeon style, at what range your ship is the most effective. So pretty much all of our weapons are from 2 to 5 range. We don't want the enemy to close in there. It'll also give you a rundown of all your various ships stats and like what you're doing right here whether or not you have all your bases covered so for example right here we're pretty covered on piloting we're good on ship ops if any of these had like a little red line it basically means that you need this requisite level of skill in that particular skill from your crew in order to fly properly um, if you get any red in there that's where you start to have problems so just keep an eye on that and that'll tell you who you need to recruit and if you need to buy yourself more crew compartments and things of that nature but you start reasonably well equipped out so you know I'm just trying to show as much as I can but this game is so beefy and there's so many things going on with it that we're just like flat out not going to get to looks like we're passing most of our tests right now so we shouldn't have to worry too much about crew morale Oh, we've got a fight over here. What's going on? So, contact disposition. They are suspicious. Indies are preparing to depart. Okay. How strong is he? Is he real, real strong? Or is he real, real weak? Let's see here. The enemy ship has 1,950 hull points. It's a level 1 pilot. 21 cargo, 38 crew. I mean, even if we lose this fight, I do want to show you how combat functions, so I think we're going to fight them, because that's a good way to close this out, because we're out of time. So the basic way that combat works, you're at a range. We're at five range right now. It's going to dictate what weapons you can fire. So for right now, we've got two rocket launchers. These cost reactor points for you to activate. The reactor points are listed up here, and you just end the turn when you're ready to unload. So there you go. We fired missiles at him and missed, but we hit him with the plasma thrower. He's trying to run away right now. And the enemy escaped our range, so he ran for it. This guy actually didn't want to fight. Uh, good. So apparently we've got crew morale right there. Hopefully it was the guy that's all bummed out and pissy because some reason. I don't know. We passed all of our tests, though, which is really, really great. Do I need to... Okay, so the ship barracks is full. Uh, we'll do spice leave right here. 
There you go. So we'll just get everybody nice and high off powders and things in order to make this all better. Uh, we made a fat profit off that hydrogen fuel, too. Basically doubled up our money. And then there's our short jumper quest right there. We'll do the diplomatic delivery. It took a little longer, but we got a whole bunch of extra rep for it, which really is what you're trying to do. You're trying to create a base of operations where you're safe. Uh, but anyways, this is uh, Space Trader, Star Trader's Frontiers. It's a pretty cool game, man. Uh, this is one of those games that you can really dive on into and, and kind of get your teeth really, really sunk on in if you're looking for a game of this type. And the fact that the Trees Brothers have put out almost 300 updates and 300 features for it, that's a really, really good sign. So anyways, Star Traders Frontiers. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. I will see you all in something hot and spicy tomorrow. But for now, I bid you adieu.